This is the all new MacBook Pro with Apple's new M1 chip, which promises to be an awesome editing machine. Let's see how it performs. Today I'm gonna to stress test it by amongst other things, seeing how it handles Canon R5 8K footage. Greetings internet, I'm Shalko. I like to travel to extremely remote places and make films. Because of this, I'm looking for the ultimate portable video editing machine. Canon R5 footage is notoriously challenging to process. Right now, I cannot edit 4K footage, let alone the 8K. I can't edit 4K footage from the R5. My computer just can't play it smoothly. Trying to edit R5 footage in Premiere on this maxed out 16 inch MacBook Pro Talking a thousand dollar computer, constant kernel panics. <sighs> so I had a problem. I needed an editing solution today. So I want to be clear about this. This is the MacBook Pro that you can go and get off the shelf today. So that is maxed at 512 megabytes. <laughs> megabytes. If you want the 16 gigabytes of RAM and up to two terabytes hard drive that's gonna take you at least a month right now to get your hands on. So the question that I'm pondering is, is this an off the shelf video editing solution that you can get your hands on today that will do what you need it to? I saw Patrick Tomaso's video on the new Mac M1 mini and I was blown away by his performance. So I put in an order, I was able to get a MacBook Pro the same day and I'm excited to put this thing in a test to see what it can do. And now the moment we've all been waiting for where I pit the 16 inch Intel against the 13 inch M series MacBook Pro in my unofficial unscientific test. On the left, we have a 13 inch off the shelf MacBook Pro with eight gigabytes of memory. On the right, we have a 16 inch Intel fully stacked, fully loaded, boom. All right, so we're gonna kick things off with R5 8K footage in Final Cut Pro, and just right out the gate, the M series is clobbering the Intel. The M series has great playback. The Intel is, that's not even dropping frames, it's playing occasional frames. Ugh. Now here's how they perform when that same footage is rendered in Final Cut Pro, and you can see that we have comparable playback here. All right, and now we have 4K Final Cut Pro unrendered, and again, the M series is just clobbering the Intel. Now we're hopping over to Adobe Premiere with that same 8K footage, and you know, we're really just saying it's about comparable. Now, of course, Adobe Premiere is not yet optimized to run on the M series chip, so it's not really a fair competition, and things will only get better on the M series from here. But if you're wondering what it looks like if you go and pick up one of these machines today and start working on it, this is what you're going to get. Which isn't bad, given the price difference. Alright, so I got curious about render times. Rendering 15 seconds of 8K footage in Premiere Pro, I got a render time of a minute and 39 seconds on the Intel, and 5 minutes and 34 seconds on the M series. Now, this was a surprising upset. Once I rendered the 8K footage in Adobe Premiere, I played back, M-Series is frozen, frozen, while the Intel has really good playback. That was surprising. Now, 4K in QuickTime, I mean, it was interesting. Even though they're both running the same OS, I had some files that QuickTime just wouldn't open in the Intel and would open on the M-Series. It was really weird. I got curious about how these would perform in QuickTime, and here you can see the playback on the M series is great and the Intel is dropping frames. If you're wondering about scrubbing, just forget about it on the Intel. And the M series, it was really buttery smooth. All right, I wanted to double check those 4K results because they just seemed so weird. So render time, 40 seconds on the Intel, six and a half minutes on the M series. And now we're getting, now we're getting good playback on both of them. I wonder if it was a slightly different codec. Not all 4K is created equally. Well, that was devastating or impressive, depending on which way you look at it. I am blown away. As you saw, the M1 just clobbered the 16 inch Intel. When it came to editing 8K footage in Final Cut Pro before the rendering happened, 
there was no comparison. The M1, I was able to scrub. The 16 inch Intel, it was, it wasn't dropping frames. It was barely playing frames. It was like three frames a second that we were seeing. Once they rendered, it was comparable in performance, but I mean, it's just, it was amazing. Now, is the MacBook M1 an off-the-shelf video solution? For the average user, I would say, yeah, this is an amazing machine that is just gonna be more than you even need. For me, personally, I would say, if you can afford the time and money to upgrade, I think it's worth it. So, so as video editors, we idle at about eight gigabytes of RAM, and at, 512 gigabytes. I mean, the render files were about 36 gigabytes for a minute of that 8K footage. So you're gonna feel a little claustrophobic if you're working on large files and large projects with that little space. I mean, SanDisk does have a two terabyte, 2,000 megabytes a second new SSD drive that they just released, affiliate link below. But, but if you're gonna shell for an external hard drive, why not just pay to have that internal and not have to deal with the cables and that extra fail point, right? <sighs> Let's be honest, the two ports are a bummer. You're telling me you have to choose two, a monitor, a second monitor, power, external hard drive or a hub. I mean, I guess for 150 bucks, I can get a Thunderbolt hub pre-ordered. That's lame, I don't wanna deal with. And 13 inches, coming from a 16 inch working on two monitors, it feels a bit claustrophobic, but the performance speaks for itself. So I'm willing to make that trade off. By the way, while doing this testing, I resolved the issue with the 16 inch Intel having constant kernel panics while importing R5 footage into Premiere. If you want to break down on that, drop a comment and I will link that video up here or you can subscribe for notifications when that video comes up. Bottom line, I'm blown out of the water with both battery and processor performance. I think it's going to blow your mind what these new machines are capable of and I think the software is only going to catch up so it's only going to get better from here. It feels like the computers have finally caught up with the codex and I'm really excited to see what creators make with it. If you'd like to see what I create with it, you already know what to do. Go ahead and subscribe, ring that bell for notifications for future videos. If this video was useful to you, go ahead and smash that like button so the algorithm helps other people find it. And I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Peace.